Hello friends, uh, in today's video we're going to be looking at MRCS. Uh, let me introduce myself, I'm Vinayak Rengen, I'm a general laparoscopic surgeon. I did my MS and uh, I've also done my uh, MRCS from the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh and uh, I'm currently doing my MCH in pediatric surgery. So in this particular video we're going to be talking about MRCS, its scope, uh, uh, a little bit about the preparation and uh, the strategies go about it. So MRCS means the member of the Royal College of Surgeons uh, and it can mean any of the four colleges in UK, England, Edinburgh, Glasgow and Ireland. Uh, most students and surgeons in the subcontinent tend to do England and Edinburgh because the centres are more conveniently located in India and Pakistan and they also have a better international outreach. A lot of people also go for Glasgow and Ireland. The First part, part A is uh, usually uh, a common exam for all the four colleges, but you have to apply through their specific college website. So the uh, application rates might vary a little bit. And uh, uh, talking about the examination per se, uh, there are two parts to the examination, part A and part B. Previously there was three parts, but now that is irrelevant. Uh, I'm going to be concentrating more on part A because that is what beginners and people who are looking at this video would like to hear about. So part A is a 300 uh, question uh, uh, examination for which lasts for about five hours. We'll be going into the details, and uh, it have for to pass the exam, you would require a pass percentage of around uh, a mark of around seventy percent. It can slightly vary according to that cohort who is writing that exam that year and in that particular college. So it can be sixty nine percent in one session and maybe seventy one or seventy two percent in one session. So essentially, around seventy five percent marks is enough to you know kind of go and say that you can uh, pass the exam. The exam happens three times a year, uh, January, April and September. Uh, the COVID kind of measure schedules a little bit and you know there was this uh, uh, concept of taking the exam at home so uh, hopefully uh, a lot of that is changing uh, right now. Uh, and in India there are multiple centres, uh, we have centres in Chennai, Bangalore, Ahmedabad, Kochi, uh, Hyderabad, Kolkata, Delhi, I might have missed one or two also. Uh, so the real question is when do you do your MRCS party exam? Uh, Many studies have suggested that the best time to do it, the highest passing is, you know, right after your uh, uh, MBBS degree or your undergraduate degree after an internship. And the good thing is that you are eligible to write your MRCs if you are uh, completed your M MBBS. So if you are a UK candidate, if you are in the UK, you can ideally write it in your foundation year, FY1 or FY2. If you are in India, Pakistan or Bangladesh or in the subcontinent or in the Middle East, uh, you can write it anytime after your MBBS uh, degree, after your internship. And uh, you need a copy of your degree certificate to even apply for the exam. Uh, so that's quite important. Uh, if you're bent on a surgical career, either in India or UK, MRCS is a good thing. So it does not mean that if you're writing MRCS, you can not write MS. MRCS is a uh, is an entry level examination. M MRCS does not make you a consultant. MRCS is an entry into uh, specialist training. You enter at an ST3 stage. The details of which we will be talking about in a, another different video and it's beyond the scope of this discussion. So you enter in as a specialist registrar if you have enough surgical expertise. Uh, you can, if you are in UK, you can you know, write it during your core training phase as well, which is basically two years of your basic general surgery training. And the for real fund is the sooner you do it better. If you are a general surgery resident, uh, try to do it in your first and second year and you know you can do your part B in your uh, in your third year of your training. But if you are just out of MBBS, you are preparing for your exam or if you are prepared, waiting for the results, waiting for counselling, I would suggest uh, go for MRCS if you are you know uh, uh, clear that you are going to take surgery or ortho only. Or some people they might you know want to use, uh, they might have completed their general surgery and uh, they might be practicing or they might be doing their MCH. For them, the best time is as soon as possible. Again, uh, so uh, it ideally requires uh, uh, three months of preparation. So, how long do you require? It requires three months of preparation, and uh, it requires you to study for almost two to three hours a day. I'll be talking about the books and the modes of preparation a little later in this particular video. Before that, I want to talk about the examination per se. The MRCS is a fire examination. It is split into two parts, part one and part two. The party paper is split into part one and part two. Part one is applied basic sciences. The exam is for three hours and it is 180 questions. Uh, it basically covers anatomy, pathology, physiology, surgical microbiology, and a few other small topics. The real big chunk is anatomy. Around uh, Out of 180 questions, around 75 to um, 80 questions are just anatomy. 
it's a very easy model to pass because most of you are fresh out of MBBS or early part of your surgical career. You have studied anatomy multiple number of times. I think anatomy should be in uh, a cake. But be very clear that without reading anatomy, you cannot do your MRCS part A. Part the second part is uh, principle of surgery in general. We call it as POSG. It is one twenty questions uh, for two hours, and uh, it consists of questions in all surgical specialties: GI surgery, colorectal, hepatobiliary, urology, pediatric surgery, trauma, and perioperative care are a big chunk. So uh, it's split into surgical specialties. Trauma and perioperative care. In perioperative care, they can go into the critical care aspects of uh, surgery. So it's extremely important that you read this, and I'll be talking about the resources a little later. So each question has only one mark, so it's three. It's a three hundred mark question, uh, three hundred mark question paper, and uh, there's no negative marks. So ideally, you should attempt all the questions. And if you cannot, uh, you know, uh, so don't it's, so forget your negative marking in NEET or in ESS or all those exams. So you have to attempt all questions. Uh, so, how do you go about uh, preparing for uh, MRCs? Uh, preparing for MRCs is not too difficult. Uh, so, I'll be starting with the most important subject, anatomy. For anatomy, I would suggest that you start off with any resource which you're comfortable with. You might have read some uh, MCQ books or some uh, PG preparation manual for anatomy, but then you will have to tune it according to MRCs preparation. So for that, I would suggest that you, um, so Dr. Rohan Kandelwal and I have devised this new uh, question bank called the Mortimer Green MRCS Party Question Bank, which just focuses purely on uh, purely on uh, MRCS preparation, and uh, we have kind of emphasized a lot on the latest pattern of examination and uh, taken a lot of effort to you know create the craft the right set of questions to help you crack your exams really well. We'll be releasing a set of videos as well soon. Uh, so. I would suggest that you subscribe to the MCQs, try solving the MCQs, add the points, extra points which you note down in the MCQs to your notes and then get back to it. You will have to read anatomy in total, which includes uh, neuroanatomy, uh, pelvic anatomy, abdomen anatomy, everything. But almost 40% of the anatomy paper is related to upper limb and lower limb. Don't ask me the reason why, but there's a lot of questions on uh, hand injuries, uh, nerve injuries, foot drop. So these are all extremely uh, uh, um, oft repeated topics. So what are the other resources for anatomy? Uh, if you're looking at uh, atlases, I would suggest Netters or Thines Atlas. Excellent resources, great images. So it helps you understand the concepts. Uh, I also would you know suggest Teach Me Anatomy. I didn't use that while preparation, but a lot of my juniors, a lot of my students have been uh, getting into uh, uh, MRC's preparation right now and they swear by Teach Me Anatomy. The diagrams in Teach Me Anatomy website are completely free and that's something which you can uh, you know kind of go through. On YouTube also we have uh, videos by the noted anatomist. Uh, all excellent videos, uh, pretty uh, pretty informative. But the real key is going back and solving them. So for that, I would recommend the Mortimer Green Question Bank. It's an extremely updated question bank, so you kind of have to solve these anatomy questions again and again and again. And I can assure you that most questions will be repeated from that. For pathology, surgical microbiology, the core is not too difficult. So I would suggest that you just solve the MCQs. Note down the points and and you know go about the MCQs are explanations are detailed enough to you know give you an idea about the entire subject overall. Um, you might have to you know spend some time reading uh, physiology. Look at the topics which are asked as questions. A simple way would be to you know um, go through the, uh, simple YouTube videos like uh, videos on coagulation or those things and uh, you know uh, form your own notes. We are also creating our own set of video lectures really soon. So uh, stay tuned uh, and keep watching the Mortimer Green app and subscribe to it for updates because we're going to be uh, creating a whole set of comprehensive video lectures within the next two months and I hope that will be really useful for you. For principles of surgery in general, uh, my go-to book would be Bailey and Love. Uh, Bailey and Love is, 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 is perfect for general surgery residents and it's a very important book uh, from a surgical point of view as well. The text is not too big, uh, uh, it's concise and that's something which you can kind of uh, uh, go through uh, rapidly as well. So how do you go about reading Bailey and Love if you have never read Bailey and Love before? Solve the MCQs, look at the points which are kind of emphasized in the MCQs, go back and read them again. I think you are going to kill it, uh, kill the exam if you are thorough with Bailey and Love. Orthopedics is a kind of a, a quite repeated uh, topic in MRCS Part A, and any of your orthopedic resources, Maheshwari or preparation manuals, are kind of enough. We'll also be releasing a set of orthopedic videos, but solve the MCQs daily. Make it a point to solve at least 30 to 50 MCQs a day. So, coming to the preparation strategy, as I told before, you will have to spend at least two to three hours a day for three months. 
you really don't need to go all out take holidays off for two three months to prepare for a master's party you really don't need that kind of stuff i'm sure you all of you are good students so two to three hours a day of deep work focus study for a master's party three months um, 90 days make sure you solve 30 to 50 questions a day for about one to one and a half hours go back spend another one and a half to two hours reading the theory part of it i think that ought to be more than enough and most important thing is you know, be careful while you know telling people in our uh, in our scenario a lot of people uh, our professors our seniors don't tend to like it when you say that you're preparing for mrc as a first year resident so be careful uh, be guarded about telling people uh, when you're preparing for mrc as party and uh, so um, it's actually essential to be safe but one thing i want to kind of emphasize right now is that never miss out on preparing for mrc at this stage so right now i am going to be talking about scope of mrc so a lot of people have asked dr rohan and i we have also covered this in one of our other videos uh, which dr rohan has posted um, why do i need to do mrc mrc is is very essential uh, even if you are not going to practice in the uk If you go to practice in the UK, MRCs is compulsory. You cannot be without, you know, progress in your surgical training without going into MRCs. But MRCs does not make you a consultant. It makes you eligible for further surgical training. If you're in India, you've done your MS, or if you've done some sort of a surgical training, if you want to go for a fellowship, spend two years in the UK, MRCs is very useful. If you're practicing in the Middle East, if you want to practice in the Middle East, your salary goes up by a few lakhs automatically, is bumped up a few lakhs just because you have a foreign degree in MRCs. Right now, I have had people telling me, or uh, people preparing for neurosurgery specialty, or people who are practicing in corporate hospitals, that an MRCS degree is extremely valued in corporate hospitals, and it definitely looks really good when you say that you know I have an uh, uh, I'm uh, you know been undergoing an MS MRC in Edinburgh. So that kind of a snob value definitely exists. For me personally, it's beyond all the snob value. When you are preparing for your your MS examination, or when you are practicing surgery, the MRCS examination gives you a good way to update yourself with the current trends. Uh, most of the questions asked are uh, from um, uh, you know current guidelines of RCS. That is something where uh, we have spent a lot of time on the Mortimer Green app, uh, trying to um, uh, and, and incorporate uh, uh, the latest guidelines because most of the resources online we saw are you know not in tune the latest guidelines and uh, latest recommendations. So we have spent a lot of effort in trying to recreate the Mortimer Green question bank with the latest questions, latest guidelines. And uh, I believe that uh, that is the best way for you to prepare. Use MCQs, solve MCQs daily. Go back and read your theory. And I uh, I believe that uh, you have a very fair chance of cracking MRCs. Thank you so much.